Hello and welcome to the new concept of the day that is scarcity. Today we are going to talk about scarcity because we all are scared of scarcity. Scarcity is lack. Scarcity is where we are not getting enough. We want for more, but we are not getting that. So that, the, that is a gap between limitless wants and limited resources. That's what we are calling scarcity. One of the greatest mind, Adam Smith, in his book, The Wealth of Nation, uh, explained the diamond water paradox of, of value. He explained that water is more useful, necessary for survival of human being, but still diamonds are valued and preferred over water. And why is that? It's very easy. Diamonds are rare. They are scarce in availability. And that's why water becomes cheaper and marginal utility and scarcity comes together to make this, to make us enable this choice that we prefer diamond over water. Okay, let's move on. So what is scarcity? It is the gap between limitless desires that we have and limited resources available around us. It is also known as paucity. British economist Lionel Robbins in his essay, Nature and Significance of Economic Science in 1932 explained the definition of economics that is, economics is the science which studies human behavior as a relationship between ends and scarce means which have alternative uses. So always in nature, we can see that there is more desire, more wishes floating around us. Even we wish for more and more everything we want in a better and more manner. But whatever we get are in a limited manner. The things we get are limited and we have to sacrifice one thing to use or to consume the other thing, right? So this scarcity, this lack of availability of things or the gap between limitless desires, wishes and limited resources available is caused due to three factors mainly. They are demand driven, supply driven and structural. Demand driven factors are those whenever demand is greater than supply in the market. So for example, during this lockdown period of COVID pandemic, masks were demanded more, but the supply, for the supply of masks during the initial period of lockdown was very limited. And that's why the scarcity of masks at that time was demand driven scarcity. Supply driven scarcity is when supply sharply declines suddenly uh, while demand is still getting more and overpowering supply, okay? So supply driven, maybe we can say that whenever there is hurricane or some kind of emergency drought, and at that time you can't get enough food grains, but there is still demand for uh, food grains. And at that time demand becomes more, but still it is a supply driven scarcity. Then there is a structural scarcity. If we compare to the population of area and the supply available in the particular area, then if they are disproportional, then it creates scarcity. If the, sub, if the availability of resources is less and the population is more, the proportional scarcity that causes is called as structural scarcity. This situation requires people to make rational allocation of resources. And what is rational? That means, we have to allocate resources. We have to use the resources only whenever they are necessary. That is, we can get to the full employment capacity only if we use rational allocation of resources. Okay, let's see. What are the features of scarcity? First of all, it is a universal fact. Everybody in the world is facing scarcity. Believe me. Then it's a relative term. It's different for different person, different for commodity as per geography, region, and as per the distribution of income. So it is relative term. Then it is determined by the price. So whenever the things become costly, we say there is a scarcity of the things or the things that we want. If they are costly, we are saying those things are scarce in the market. Why? Because if the supply is less than demand, then always there is a rise in price. And that's why we can say that there is a scarcity when there is a price rise. It 
force us to choose. That means if there is a scarcity in the market and I need to buy certain items, as a consumer, I have to buy alternative, substitute, or the certain thing, but without any kind of choice. So I'm forced to have another things or I'm forced to um, have uh, may I have to make a choice about those things that's that means scarcity forces to choose and the last feature that we are going to see is it creates conflicts class conflicts social conflicts cause it creates unequal distribution of the resources in the market and that's why it creates conflicts and that's why scarcity is very scary thing so there must be some ways to make a stop, right? We need to stop it. First of all, let's see, economic growth. We need to make more economic growth. That means we need to make more income. We need to make more GDP. And the way to arrive at that higher rates of GDP is we need more rise in efficiency. We need to rise our efficiency. We need more productivity, more efforts, more technology. We need to get better at everything. Okay, and the one thing that is not going to happen, but maybe we can expect to reduce the expectations. But as a human being, I think it's kind of difficult, right, to reduce the expectations. And last but not least, this is the concept that is, a, that is the basic problem which gives rise to the study of economics. And that's why the people who hate to study economics must bow to the scarcity because because of scarcity we are scared of economics and we have to study economics but don't be scared of economics because scarcity can only be only be removed if we study economics better see you next time bye have a nice day ahead